Okay, maybe we should start. Okay, so welcome uh, to the second uh, day uh, of the school. So we are very happy uh, to continue with the lectures of Kantaro. And please ask questions. So don't be afraid to just to unmute yourself and ask questions. And also, of course, ask questions in the chat. But, uh, okay, so Kantaro, please. Yes, uh, thanks, Shiromo. So, yeah, uh, let's start the lecture two. Yeah, Shiromo said that you shouldn't hesitate to ask any questions. And okay, so this is, sorry, I don't see. Okay, let's get, um, so I, I continued the last, last lecture. So this is the plan for today. Um, I just, I go and through and finish the overview on the anomaly and the equations with invertible QFT. And, and then I will talk about the, the fermion, anomaly of the fermions and, and the yet, yet invariant. This part will be, uh, I shamelessly most part, I took directly from the UG's Tazi lecture. So it's, it's good that, that you should thank Yuji, it's bad, you should break me. And and also I apologize that maybe some of you attended that study, so that the, yeah. And okay, and the last part, I don't, I don't expect I can go there, but the, if I, if time is I, uh, I go. Your screen is frozen, can you? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, my screen is frozen. I see a tiny bit of it. So like the first uh, are you lines. It? So I, yeah, let me just stop sharing for one time and. Sorry for the disruption. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, it froze on my side. Uh, um, um, don't see it. Maybe I should uh... okay. I I leave once and and go back. Come 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 back. Yes. Oh, maybe maybe it was no. It doesn't work. You yeah. stop sharing, so maybe you can try. Sharing yeah, I, I'm I'm trying to stop sharing, but uh, but it doesn't work. So I think you are not sharing now. So you did stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, we lost the speaker. So uh, does somebody want to tell us about uh, TQFTs? <laughs> we have the slides, we can <laughs> start improvising. Okay. Sorry, coming back. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, Ibu, can you make uh, Kantaro co-host? Oh, okay, fine. Uh, I'm, I'm already. Okay. Okay. Hope this time it works. Oh, uh, sorry. So, you, this is it? Okay, good. Okay, so, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, the if time permits, the, uh, it's less likely that the, I, I'm going to briefly talk about the 60 SCFTs. Um, so, recap. 
uh, we, so we were talking about the two-factor anomalies, and so what physically matters was the, the anomalous phase you do, when you do the gauge transformation for the background module that counters ambiguity. And, and I briefly mentioned about the case where the G, the symmetry group is discrete, and when um, the dimension is two, then this um, the anomalous phase is classified, possible anomalous phase is classified by this uh, three cycle. So the, and the, the counter term ambiguity is, is is described by the, the covalent operation on beta. So and and this precisely defines the group homology. So the pure uh, G anomaly in the D dimensions is um, classified by the the degree three um, group homology of the group G. Okay. So but this is just a, um, in, in when uh, the group is discrete and just um, in bosonic theory with us no spin structure on manifold and and considering the only the pure part. Okay, so and the you can we can ask a more uh, general classification. So namely, uh, what happens if um, it includes the space-time symmetry? So if you consider space and symmetry, they might so it it means that you care about the gravitational anomaly and also also if it, if system have a time reversal symmetry which is anti unitary then you you might also care about the the anomaly of such discrete space and symmetry. Also, uh, this group homology doesn't care about the fermions, but if you have fermions. Then uh, the partial function starts to depend on the spin structure, and and there can be, uh, in a sense, a mixed anomaly between, between the spin structure and your uh, global. Okay. okay, so that's also possible, and uh, and also how about the continuous symmetry case? So in, it, it, the perturbative anomaly is unknown. I'm But there, there are also the non part of the part, and how can we capture the, the those non part of the part, uh, non part of the anomaly for the continuous groups? And okay, so all, all of these questions are actually already answered in, in a sense, but uh, but the, so first, so what what is the allowed uh, violation or anomaly of the for given symmetry, and there is one uh, important hypothesis, which is that the anomaly up to the, the counter term in D dimensions with some with with uh, some symmetry G. Is in one to one correspondence uh, to gauge invariant counter term in D plus one dimensions. Okay. And so this, I, I put this in. Okay, so the precise definition is the is the invertible. What I really mean is by this counter term is the invertible QFT. Depends um, depends on depending depending on G background. And so it might not very really look like a counter term. It, it, it might be uh, some complicated thing, but still, um, it, it's some kind of generalization of a counter term. You can write down using your background. Okay, so so this is the hypothesis, um, and 
so what is the inductive of quantum field theory? Um, here I denote it by I D plus one. And so formal definition is that the well, in, inductivity of QFT is that there is another QFT I inverse, such that if you stack the two, and and if you want, uh, stack the two of them, then you, you get a trivial QFT. And that's the formal definition, so that's the, what, what inductible means. But more, uh, in, more intuitive or more uh, physical, um, Exposition of the same condition is as follows. So for any QFT, if you, in D plus one D, uh, if you have um, some D dimensional manifold, not the, the which should be divided as the, the space time size, and also some background on the, the time size, then uh, you should uh, this QFT. This is about any QFT. QFT should give um, the, the Hilbert space, this is the state space, uh, on such a uh, time size. Okay, and inductibility means that for any um, for any such uh, state time size, that state space is one dimensional. Okay, so that's the so almost trivial. Um, for any time set, you have a single state, so there, almost there's nothing, and no, there's nothing exciting. However, um, oh, and here, here, well, any, I said any, but this is a closed. Taro, there is a question. Can you elaborate on what stacking means, both from physics as well as math viewpoints? Um, oh, yeah, stacking means, uh, I mean, is yeah you just um literally put the two system on top of each other and and without here here just um without coupling anything so so the Hilbert space for is just a tensor product of the two and yeah and the the Hamiltonian is just a sum of I mean uh, Acting on each sector, so I should have said the I am it. yeah, and yeah, so it, it, it yes, yeah, so, so in, in some sense, since it's clear that the, the this direction is clear, uh, no, 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 here, this direction is clear that because you you should get the trivial theory with when tensoring the two, so in particular you the, when you tensoring the Hilbert spaces you should get. Um, the one dimensional Hilbert space. So, to, for that to be true, you, you, the, the dimension of the Hilbert space is one. The, the converse is also two. Okay. And so, and so the meaning of this hypothesis, more physical meaning of this hypothesis, is that if, if your, your theory TD in D dimension has some anomaly A, then uh, you should regard TD to be uh, a boundary theory um, of the corresponding um, invertible QFT. Okay, so this is the cartoon. You, um, so this uh, invertible QFT is boring on closed manifold. However, however, it, it can it uh, it can automate interesting boundary theory on if the manifold is boundary. And you should the modern point of view is that you should regard. Well, it's not very modern, but you should regard the the D dimensional theory is the boundary. Of the, the boring D plus one dimensional dimensional theory, and okay, and and so your partition function okay. your partition function of the uh, the theory in D dimensions 
pounds and manifolds and A is so you, you just do the path integral on this small region and that so that should so this uh, partial function should be regarded as an element of um, this one dimensional here with space. And of course, um, if you pick a basis of the, this one dimensional here with space, um, you, uh, you, 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 you can define this partial function as a number, but it, it, uh, so it's more natural to regard it as a uh, element in the Hilbert space of this invertible QFT. Uh, and and this, this Hilbert space doesn't have any particular canonical basis. The basis is just, um, ambiguity is just a phase. Okay. And, and that phase ambiguity, it, it, it is the, uh, corresponds to the quantum ambiguity in the, uh, of this partial function. Um, okay. Is there any? Taro, can you give an example of, an, of a non invertible QFT? Oh, whatever you can come up with. Free so, theory, A theory, any, anything. Okay. You, 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 you're, the standard QFT always have a, um, the, Hebrew, the dimension of a Hebrew space is infinite, so yes. very far from invertible. Uh, also, e even if it's topological, say chan Feynman theory, then so the dimension of Hilbert, Hilbert space is one on the sphere, but then but but finite, but uh, more than one on a general manifold for the the dynamical chan Feynman theory. Okay, so that's not invertible either. Yeah, it, 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 in a sense, it's more. Um, difficult to find a uh, non-trivial invertible QFT. That's very subtle. So, yeah. Okay. Well, of course, I'm, I'm going to give giving an example. Okay. And so, and the, and the, so if you regard the, your uh, theory to be the boundary theory of invertible QFT. Then, so if, and further assume that if you have, so for simplicity, um, this is not always the case, but if you assume that your space, space time, sorry, the, uh, your D dimension of space time and the background extends to, no, 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 this is this one, D plus one dimension manifold and, and the boundary, uh, the background on it, like this, like this, okay. Then the then the whole system is engaged invariant. That so the partial function of this uh, the couple system is equal to uh, the partial function uh, of the, the gauge transformation. Okay, and so which means that if you only care about the, the boundary partial function. Um, if you do, if you do the gauge transformation for the boundary partial function, then you get um, the contribution from the back, and which is uh, d plus one g divided by this is d plus one over d plus one a. So in this case, this is the, the anomalous uh, phase you get in in terms of the invertible QFT. And so you, you can further, um, so this is the basically the ratio between contribution from here to here. You can just uh, unfold this to j just flip this side to, to like on the other side, this, this bar, means the, the orientation flip and you glue by and the glue the two sides by the gauge transformation g okay 
So then you you you, you get a single closed money deep plus one dimensional closed manifold with with the background. And so this anomalous phase is the the is just the, the partial function of the inverted QFT on uh, on the closed manifold with uh, give specific background. Yeah, so so okay, and, and this kind of um, relationship between the the anomalous phase and the partial function on the of the inverse QFT in one plus dimension high one, one dimension higher is called the anomaly inflow. And and this shows that the, of course of course if you can put your uh, d dimensional theory on the boundary of the trivial theory. So if, if, but well, this is all, almost by this. Um, but if the corresponding um, GFT is trivial, which means that it's anomaly. Okay. The, your d dimensional theory is anomaly. Okay, and one motivation of this um, hypothesis is um, is one motivation is that at least if if we if we assume this, then then the fifth anomaly matching is automatic. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so here my viewpoint is that the, of, of course the definition of QFT is not clear. So the, the, the very precise and intrinsic definition of possible anomaly is not clear. So, so here um, to give, so, so, so rather than um, thinking about it here, I just, um, you, we just define something which is RG4 invariant. Well, the pitch satisfies the fifth time my matching condition. That's what we want. Okay. So, and and this hypothesis fulfills that because um, if uh, so, if you do if you start from the couple system and and do the RG flow, but um, here this invertible QFT is too uh, too boring, and and there is nothing to flow. Okay, so this is a fixed point. This is this is a fixed point. So uh, under the RG flow, of course, of course, uh, your d-dimensional d-dimensional theory is uh, not necessarily a fixed point. So this flows. So the d-dimensional theory flows from U B to I L, but the bulk d plus one dimensional input the QFT doesn't flow. Okay, so Okay, so the in both of the QFT does not flow. Doesn't flow. So uh, automatically the the UV and IR um, did the did theory uh, have the uh, on the on the uh, boundary of the same in both of QFT. So. Okay, so the examples, so when you are talking about a perturbative anomaly, then this uh, corresponding uh, invertible QFT is the Chan-Simon term. This is not, not, not the dynamical Chan-Simon theory. This is just, um, just really, so in, in case of the D equals to four, so like the A which is, And and we are, oh, this A and F are just a background. We are not integrating over A. This is just just you have this uh, class cut number. Okay, this is a partial function, and 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 you can easily ch easily check that the gauge gauge transformation gives you the 
um, but but gives you no, sorry this is not m this is m that you do this transmission this gives you uh, the anomalous phase you, you expect. Yeah, and and I don't have time to explain this in detail, uh, but for finite group G, this very similar thing happens. So for, um, as I said, it's the pure G uh, anomaly is classified by the group homology, but uh, it's now that the, it defines uh, the digraph with them. What's, what's called a digraph with them? Digraph with them. Term, which is just uh, the generalization of trans Simon term to the finite group case in deep reference dimension. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I have a question. Yes. Uh, is it possible that the gauge field does not extend to a D plus one dimensional manifold? Yes, uh, it's, pos it's possible that the, even a manifold itself might not extend to the deep plus one dimensional manifold if it's not new boson. I'm, I'm going to talk more about that. But yes, so yeah, so this is just a simple, for, for simplicity. I mean, in this in the case, it's new boson. But the more general formalism is that it, it's just. Um, the partial function values in in the the Hilbert space. Then you should you, 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 uh, then so to fix all the uh, all the ambiguity of the partial function, you should you you have to uh, fix the basis uh, for of of this invertible QFT in a consistent way. And yeah, so thank you. So this this uh, tensoring that you call stacking. Would you say again? In terms of, in terms of this uh, last action that you wrote down, a wedge f wedge f, mm -hmm. just taking an action with the opposite sign or something. Oh, sorry. Uh, what is the question? This is. I'm uh, the stacking that you mentioned before. Oh yeah, 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 So inverse, inverse is just the, yeah, the, the inverse of inverse of the PFD is very trivial. You, you just, so, so I take no, the complex, complex conjugate, conjugate, yes. I, I don't understand what's special about this. You said that invertible is a rare thing, but I, I mean, any action you can write down and. Oh yeah, um, it's kind of yes, um, it's kind of yes, I mean, in, in this, I mean, what I mean is that if you if you are reading Peskin Schroeder over some this QFT, then you you never thought of it, and also also if you have a explicit background, you can write down this kind of thing. But yeah, um, sometimes it's there are very subtle terms that you might not come up with. So yeah, that that what I mean. It's not rare, but it's it's hard to I mean find it interesting. That that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Yes. Yeah, so um, as I a bit emphasized, it, yeah, it, it, it's a bit. Um, it's not it's not easy to come up with all the possible um, invertible QFT by um, from just our head, and we need to 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 have a classification of invertible QFT. Um, we we need to have a very sophisticated math, but uh, thanks to these um, 
mathematician trees and Hopkins. And um, uh, it's already done in a sense, in, in very, very, very um, broad, broad case. So this is a theorem. This is really a rigorous theorem, surprisingly, that in, in, in the, ma the mathematician standard, I, I understand, as I understand. So for the topological invertible QC, uh, here I assume the unitary invertible QC with, with uh, some symmetry G is in one to one correspondence to the torsion part of the cobolism. Well, uh, maybe I should say it's a invariant. Um, invariant. Invariant. Uh, in D plus one D with uh, G symmetry, G dot grand, G bundles, you see. And and so not all the topo uh, invertible QFT is topological. Um, for example, uh, this Charles Simon term it depends on the very detail of A, so it's not topological. So for there are non-topological. This, this is just a, the unitary invertible QFT, again with some symmetry G, is in one to one corresponded to free part of the Boltzmann invariant in D plus two dimensions with G bundle. And this this free part is just uh, corresponds to the chance and possible chance and okay. well, this this uh, the correspondence between free part and the chance and time is is very standard. The, but what is conjecture is uh, this uh, this part. Okay. okay, and 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 the arrow goes along the way. And so this this first part, the topological invertible QFT corresponds to the non-part of the anomaly, and the latter uh, non-topological invertible QFT is, as I said, is just a chance time and term in one higher dimensions, and the uh, part of the part, part of the anomaly. This works for uh, uh, for the continuous or discrete uh, discrete symmetry and mixture of that or like a space. If it includes space time symmetry, then that works. Um, and and so uh, this is I just heard that the if you um, it, it's not proven for the uh, the theorem is not proven when the G is a higher form symmetry, um, but probably works. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I have to. Um, it explain uh, the Boltzmann or Cobaltism. Um, uh, whether whether I attach call on top on top of Boltzmann is not important. Um, yeah, Antonio? I I just sometimes. Um, I, I mean, maybe I missed. It. Did you assume that uh, your uh, dimension of your space time is even or odd, or did you assume? Oh, this, this works. This works. This works for any. D. Of course, there is no part of the anomaly when D is odd. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but this 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 theorem or the hypothesis one and, and theorem should work off for any. So the non-perturbative uh, statement is uh, is non-trivial for any dimension. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Okay. So. Uh, 
I have to explain the Borism or Coborism anyway. Um, so the a pair of so if we we have two a pair of the manifolds uh, and the, and the background on it, and so the two are said to be bordered to each other when there is um, even higher dimensional. Maybe I maybe I did view. Um, manifold and background on it such that uh, that connects the two. So we have two backgrounds, and so the two backgrounds are bold onto each other. If it is connect, it can be connected by one dimensional okay so well the trivial example is that if you if you consider the just um, manifold s1 disjoint union s1 oh yeah so so here the the n and this n d plus one is not assumed to be connected and so yeah, if you consider the disjoint union of the two S ones, then you can easily find the Bordism from that to the single S one. So that uh, this S one disjoint union S one is bordered onto S one, and further you can cap off it, cap cap off the the S one. So S one is further bordered onto the empty set. Okay. So. This is just a trivial example, and and this so the Bordism group, the Bordism group is just like we like the omega of of d, and this is the space of the d-dimensional manifold modulo this Bordism. And and this is a group by the group the the group operation is just given by the the disjoint union. This is this is the Boltzmann group. And yeah. So if you if, if you're caring about the symmetry G, then um, yeah, here with the this each manifold should come with with the bundle data. Okay, so this is the Borisism group, and in the to the torsion part, but the Borisism invariant is the some some sense the dual of uh, dual of the Borisism group. So w means that some some topological invariant, which is in, also invariant under under the this uh, Borisism. Okay, and in the torsion mm -hmm. is. There is a question in the chat. At, sure. at the level of the topology, what does the notation uh, A mean? Well, A is some G connection. So this is G connection or, or G, uh, when G is discrete, then this is G cycle. Answer. Okay. So yeah, and of course the torsion is um, is some element. So this is element with elements with a finite order, and the free is the element with with the infinite order. So if you multiply. If you if you multiply uh, finite times and you get the uh, identity or oh, identity is the empty set and that that's the torsion part and okay and if you yeah if you don't get one uh, in whatever time you you multiply you, it's not uh, it, it's in the free part okay. so this is a statement. 
of the field Hopkins. Uh, how do we see that uh, non perturbative anomalies are necessarily classified by topological unitarian variable TQFTs? Topological QFTs and not non topological QFTs. Oh, um, yeah, so it's, it kind of depends on the, this conjecture. So if this conjecture is clear, then the, the non-topological non input of the QFT are um, classified by the chance term. So it, yeah, and, and, and that, that's, we know that that uh, describes the positive anomaly. So everything else should be non-positive. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this is um, general general theorem and so combined with the hypothesis one hypothesis one uh, this theorem plus conjecture classifies the possible uh, anomalies and well uh, actually computing this cobalism group is not easy always but uh, at least this paves the uh, way to, to do it okay and Okay. Okay. So this is a remark uh, about the relationship uh, of this anomaly and the input the GFT to the more uh, condensed matter system because uh, the whole the whole thing uh, I mean this modern uh, development on the anomaly is is essentially triggered by the the uh, the research done in the condensed matter side. So it's important to mention on that. So there's the and the, so here, uh, there's another important hypothesis, which is the invertible GFT um, is in one to one correspondence to invert, well, deformation class of, deformation class of invertible lattice system. And and most of the, the, the invertible lattice system is in condensed matter side called the SP symmetry protected topological phases. Um, not, yeah, there's a subtle difference between the terminology, I, I don't explain it. Um, yeah, and so recently there is uh, about, this is still a hypothesis, but, um, but recently uh, th there is a very interesting paper by Kapustin Stenko. Uh, Claiming that they prove, uh, my understanding is that they claim that they proved this correspondence for the in the case of the uh, uh, gravitation pure gravitational anomaly in two in one plus one dimension. So yeah, and so in the the, Excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Hi, so what does invertible mean in the in case of a lattice system? Is that the same with the stacking and the addition of Hamiltonians? Yes, uh, here, here you are allowed to do some deformation. So stacking, stacking and, and do, do some deformation of the Hamiltonian and you, can, you, you, you get uh, the trivial, trivial, I mean trivial system in the Hamiltonian series. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good question. So yeah, so in HEPTH community, um, the, in most, in many cases, not all. Uh, so what we really care is the d theory and and this, um, the invertible. So this is what we care. And the D plus one dimensional input to QFT is often, not all, always, often just auxiliary thing. Just a, some convenient um, structure. Um, exception is that when, when you, when you, one is when you do the lattice, um, just, I mean, try to lattice QFT or some, something, 
And the other is that if you do some actual anomaly inflow in some string theory, say, onto from from the from the bulk to the brain, like that, then then this um, in about the QFT is the um, very physical in that context. But in general, um, this invertible QFT is some uh, auxiliary thing. Okay. Um, in condensed matter physics, um, this invertible, not, I mean, invertible phase or the SPT phase is actual system to them. Here, the really actual, some, um, some real material, say. And then, but this SPT is, is invertible. So uh, again, it's, it's, it's boring in bulk. However, um, on, on, on the boundary, um, so, uh, uh, okay, so uh, as I was emphasizing the, the bound, bound on the body of invertible QFT, there, there still be an interest in um, physics. So in, in the condensed, condensed matter uh, context, this is some uh, often on the boundary of such SPT, you find interesting edge, edge modes. And so the so for their point of view, the the invertible system is a, is a model of some actual system and boring in bulk, but on on the boundary, uh, you you find some something interesting and uh, and the pioneering examples are the topological insulator or topological superconductor. Other examples. So, yeah. So, yeah. In the case of a topological insulator, it's really the bulk is really is, um, looks like uh, you, the usual insulator. But on the on the boundary, you always um, there, you say that there's a um, robust gapless mode, and yeah, and, and of of course it's actually uh, observed in uh, in the the actual experiment. Okay. okay. So this is a remarkable relationship to the condensed water systems. Uh, so yeah, I, I moved to the fermions, uh, the more concrete thing about this anomaly. But uh, before that, um, about the, this general framework, is there any questions? There is a question in the chat. Okay. Uh, can I look at the chat? Okay, so up to now, there are no examples of invertible QFT without the lattice construction. Is it true? That's the question. Um, without, without the lattice constructions. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't say that for any known in invertible QFT, uh, the lattice construction is no no. I mean, it's it's not. Sometimes it's 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 uh, not easy. Um, for for the diagram, we can thing. It's it's very um, uh, straightforward. But if it involves some space time symmetry, blah blah, then uh, it, it's not it's not easy to find some. Um, uh, that some lattice system that reproduces that invertible system, but but probably that's just that we don't know. So yeah. Yes. And this. Oh yeah, sixty. Um. Uh, so. Oh, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't get the the intent of the Jonathan comment. Uh, I I promise that I I can get to there uh, in the next lecture at least. 
and yeah, it seems too far. But yes, I, I promise I, I will get there. Yes. Um, example of um, I mean it's it's not invocable. Uh, I, I don't I don't really get it. Um, it's not it, it, there's no lattice system, but it's it's not not invocable. Surely. I mean, sure, sure. That, that's like a new phenomena. Uh, if 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 the theory have any anomaly, then you you don't you don't um, uh, at least the general belief is that you you don't um, you cannot get the lattice system in D dimensions. But probably you can do it in uh, on if you extend the theory to the one higher dimension. Okay, so let me move to the fermions. Um, the anomaly of uh, uh, chiral fermion D dimensions here, I, as I said, I, I shamelessly do most of the things from the UG's lecture. Uh, but yeah, so uh, other good um, references are the Witten's paper or review in uh, a few years few years ago, several years ago, and also, yeah, I, I, I haven't read carefully, but uh, there's another very recent work by Yonikura and Lisa. Okay, so this should be a good read. And, okay, so, okay, as I, uh, as I said, from the hypothesis one, so given um, chiral fermion in D dimensions, we should find the corresponding e, uh, invertible QFT in Deep reference dimensions. Okay, so so we want so we want to find some some natural construction of the invertible QFT, which have on which have the chiral fermion in D dimensions on on this boundary. Okay, okay. and and okay, so it's it's not very easy to um come up with it um, on top of your head so it's more e easier to first uh, construct your chiral fermion on the boundary of massive fermion in one higher dimension and um and take the mass in the mass of the bulk fermion to be infinite so that 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 will define the Uh, you mean you think you think uh, gap with edge edge more than invertible the anomaly theory? Well, it, it's it's uh, gapless edge mode of an um, invertible invertible GFT, yes. For the e swing, um, for more ge most general sixty one comma zero CFT, it's it's actually not invertible. I mean, uh, it's more subtle, but. That's right. Yes. Um, defect when defect group is trivial, then the deeper on dimensional QFT can be invertible. Uh, it's it's if it's when it's not, then there, it has to be the topological but uh, uh, non invertible QFT. Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. So going back to the fermions. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how to how to do it? How how to get the uh, the chiral fermion on the boundary of massive fermion? And that's um, so. I think I think the the original paper is uh, Alvaregame, Pietro, and Della Pietro and Muo. And so uh, here, I for explicit, uh, I I just take the d equals to four generates to any dimension. So first, uh, think about the five D fermion with the mass real, real mass, uh, which modulates over the fifth direction. So I just uh, um, like this. Okay, so the mass goes to minus m zero to m zero. Okay. Think about this 
uh, moderated mass of the 5D fermion. Okay. So then the Dirac equation, if you uh, if you decompose your 5D fermion into the 4D chiral fermion uh, with respect to the gamma 5, then so the Dirac operator is essential here for the fifth direction, this is just you know, gamma five plus m in in matrix you have uh, like this here. Okay and and solving it, the, you find a zero mode, like two zero modes. So X5, DX5. Okay. And so the, so the, the side plus this this zero mode is normalizable, and this one is not. Okay, so so the side plus is um, sensible to talk about. So cartoon is that you you, you have um, the mode massless mode in. In, with the plus um, chirality um, concent concentrated at the uh, at x five equals to zero, okay. and of course it extends to the the remaining four four directions. And yeah, so this is um, just a continuous version of the domain wall fermion in the, the, the lattice PFT context. Okay. And yeah, so. So, and you can just hold uh, this um, the x5 to the negative part to the, to the positive side. So you get the on on the x5 equal to zero, you get the chiral fermion, and on, in the bulk you have you have a fermion with the mass is positive and mass is negative okay? okay and and we just take the mass goes to infinity limit or equivalently you just run the RG flow either either it's fine you get some uh, inverse of the so before taking the mass to be infinity of course in the bulk you have you have many modes. There is massive but many modes. So it's not in vertical. Table space is infinite dimensional. But once you are taking the mass goes to infinity, um naively everything becomes massive and you get nothing. But there there's uh in general there's a subtle um effect if it remains. And yeah, so this uh, the partial function of the, this invertible um, GFT is, I mean, I'm just writing what I said. So uh, can be comp compute it by taking the limit where of the ratio of partial functions of massive Okay, so okay. okay, and this thing is called essentially called uh, APS Yeta invariant. 
Okay, and So the eta invariant itself is defined by yeah if we expand this this um, free partial functions we defined that this should be uh, again value of the Dirac operator and one over two pi of the argument of i. The absolute value of the partial function are the same for the positive and negative um, mass. So we only care about the, the argument, and argument is this and, and this argument. In in if we take the, this n, n zero cos infinity limit, this is um, roughly speaking. Sum over the sign of the eigenvalue of the zero operator. Okay. Of course, uh, this is uh, some infinite sum of plus one and minus one, and so you have to regularize. Okay. Um, and the important theorem um, of APS um, at the airport is that uh, when when this and, and d plus one dimension manifold is is closed and further a boundary of of the uh, the deeper two dimension now manifold when when and also so when n d plus one and also background is nil bordant nil bordant means it's bordant to the entity set then this yet invariant Um, equals to okay, number of zero modes to be to be precise index that on this u d plus two u d plus two is the uh, is the nil boldism of this n d d plus one and plus some um, something. A roof trace row of e to the f over two pi. Um, in here, okay, and so I have to explain it. Um, so yeah, so so this is some integer, of course. And okay, and this part is called is called the anomaly. So this integrand is called anomaly polynomial. Well, here means that you, we just pick the deeper or the degree deeper two part. And this A of genus is something like this. Um, depends on the rich tensor. And so, so this so AR is um, some combination of the trace R squared and trace R to the fourth and, and so on. And so this is um, describes the part of the gravitational anomaly. And and this part, this row is the your representation of the fermion, and and F is of course the, the background gauge background gauge field for the continuous group. Okay. So so this part, the this chunk character part is the 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 part of the anomaly for the uh, the global thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I will come back to this point. So, I, yeah, I don't have time, nor I don't, I'm not 
able to explain the derivation of this index theorem. Uh, one good suggestion of reading is the, the this paper. Of course, of course, you can try to read uh, APS original paper. But uh, another is the this paper by uh, more recently, and so they really um, uh, talking about the, this try to prove this APS index theorem in this in this the context of domain wall fermion. So they are really talking about the um, I don't, the partial function of massive fermions and, and, and so on and so on. Okay, so, yeah. Well, there, were, yes, there were a couple of questions. So I think okay. Ali wanted to ask. So um, on the previous slide, um, we divided the partial functions of two drug fermions. So the uh, partial functions of here. Oh, yes. Uh, on, on, on the second last line, we divided the partition functions of two Dirac fermions. Why did we not multiply them uh, for taking tensor product of uh, two theories? Oh, um. Okay, yeah, so good question on what to say. Um, yeah, so yeah, maybe I, I, what we care is, is only the phase and yeah, so Maybe I should have said like um, this guy is the z of the m m equals to n zero and z bar of m equals to n zero. So here the bar is a complex conjugate because you 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 fold it, and but but we only care about the uh, the argument so, such that the Because the mass mass goes to um, yeah. infinity, so yeah. Um, okay. I see. Thank you. Yeah, that 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 that's more precise. Okay. I mean, so, uh, I mean, this is yeah, of course I mean. There was another question by Aksan. Do you want to ask it or should I read it? Yeah, so I was, uh, I was gonna ask, uh, doesn't the eta invariant also give you uh, the charge of the domain wall fermion in two dimensions? Uh, when d equals to two. Right, so uh, yeah, I was wondering what the relation is physically. Uh, relation to what uh, would, you, would you explain? I, I couldn't get the uh, the, the charge of the domain wall fermion. Charge of the domain wall fermion. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here, I mean, to get the non trivial yet invariant, of course, you um, think about something chiral. And I mean, so, yeah, uh, I mean, this. This bound, I mean, bulk massive fermion also should be um, charged under the, the the background. But does it answer your question? Or, uh, okay, sure. Maybe I'm too ignorant about the domain of fermion. Uh, yeah, I guess um, it's okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so. Let me quickly, um, yeah, I don't have too much time. Let me let me do quickly the, the very, very degenerate trivial <laughs> example, which is when d equals to zero, okay? And so there, about fermion, I mean, uh, and, and the symmetry group taken to be u1. So formally, we think about some complex fermion, single complex fermion, and the grass mind develop of that. 
this is zero dimension for this box this time. Right? And this is zero. Um, this is zero. But but if we take the formal the focus on the measure of the of the of this Grossman integral, then um, if this is this formal uh, fermion is charged, of course you will be get, there's um, uh, phase if you do the the U1 rotation from the measure, and the Fujikawa told us that the such um, major uh, such contribution from the major is um, the anomaly. So okay, so so this is to degenerate, but um, anyway. Um, so anyway, we, we can think about the Yeta invariant on the closed manifold in 1D. And so we we expect that we, sh we can find some, something non-trivial. And so let's compute the Yeta invariant on the on the circle with our, our steam structure means that the periodic boundary condition for the fermion. And, and A is just a holonomy on the x1 some flux um, connection and the jack operator is just the, this and the eigenvalue is just this so you, it's easy to compute the this okay so sine of en Okay, so we need to regularize, and you can do whatever you like. Uh, one one way is just the adiabatic uh, regularization, and you find okay, it's just a very easy exercise. Um, you find this. A half minus alpha over the time. Okay. So how is this consistent with the APS index theorem? And so the APS index theorem assumes that the, your manifold is no ball dunk, but this R um, S1 with R spin structure is not no ball dunk. Okay. So you can we cannot directly apply it the theorem to this case. We can instead think about the, the disjoint union of the two and put the holonomy, possibly different holonomy to each each um, circle. And so you can the X computation is just sum or sum the two. So half plus half minus alpha one over two by for two. Okay. And okay, so this is but this is one. So this one is the num oh yeah, so you so this is no voltant by this, so just the U2 is the flat cylinder and with the R R periodic boundary condition and the periodic direction. And well, you you have to be careful about uh, the orientation of the holonomy, and the, the correct thing is that the holonomy is this way, and alpha one is this way, and the alpha two is the other way. Okay, and applying the APS index theorem, so here this is a flat um, saying that you have one uh, zero mode, and here. So, so this A roof genus does nothing. This is degree, P1 is degree four. So it's too big. So A roof genus does nothing. You get the, just contribution from the, the chunk character. So you just get this. And so integrating this, you get the two holonomies. 
and there's the integration by parts and and this one is the their, their mode good so the rough read of this APS index theorem is so if you ignore the all the details then you roughly speaking eta is the chan sign on term by the integrate by the integration by parts so the chan sign term, I mean, so this 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 anomaly polynomial is the <laughs> polynomial of this uh, p1 or trace of the rich tensor and also the trace of s so if you if, if you do the integration by parts that define the chan simon form so so roughly speaking eta is the the, the chan simon term plus plus some correction coming from coming from the index also the the fact that the not all um manifold and backgrounds are neural bordens yeah so the, the, the corrections and as i said so this part is the the part of this anomaly and the correction part is not present okay and yeah so Again, so the the part of the part is captured by this chance time term or by this end equation, um, equivalently by this um, a roof genus. I mean, yeah, a roof genus times the uh, chunk character. Yeah, and it, and this anomaly polynomial. Um, I mean, as I said, it is, it is known to be in the defined the free part of the D plus one dimensional Boltzmann invariant. Yeah, oh, this is D plus two. And <laughs> okay, and so and from the free Hopkins uh, theorem, we, this non part of the part. This correction part should somehow define the the torsion part of the the Boltzmann invariant and how it works. So, so to do that, gather some set of the fermions with various chiralities so that so that the anomaly polynomial vanishes. In the, when D is odd, it's automatic. When D is even, you you pair up some fermions and with the priority so that the anomaly polynomial is zero, then so if you do that, then if you can do that, then the, the total uh, anomaly is just uh, some sum over the yet invariant. And so by the assumptions if if you have the two manifold and backgrounds that um boldism uh, that are boldant then so then the difference of the the sum of the this data invariance is by, by APS index theorem and the assumption just e to the two pi i of the no, number of zero modes on on this u d plus two connect connecting these two manifolds. And this is number of zero modes is integer. So this is one. Okay, so, so in other words, the, if these two are both, uh, I mean, under this assumption, this, if these two, two manifolds are both, then, then the partial function of this invertible TFTs, I mean, invertible TFTs in this case, is. Um, Is the same, and also it's it's torsional because depend this um, yet exponential of the yet invariant in, in uh, already varies in u one, okay. and oh yeah, it doesn't prove okay, it doesn't prove that the torsion, but but it's known that it, it should be torsion, and okay, so if 
if if the part the part of this and I might this accent okay so so this one this this one is in the torsion part well I haven't proved proved that it's in torsion part for this invariant and this question this okay and this, yeah I should quickly finish so yeah um Yeah, so if so we, we computed the yet invariant under the presence of the U1 background. If we if we uh, ignore the U1 background, okay, just um, turn off the U1 background and we computed that it's half. So the <laughs> on the uh, S1 with periodic boundary condition. So this is if you exponent it it it's minus one. And and in indeed indeed this uh, defines this eta invariant defines the Borisism invariant, the spin with the spin structure on manifold in the degree one to the, the dimension one, and it's proven to be zero. So, so this eta invariant defines the non-trivial uh, Borisism invariant. In this. Yeah, it, it, it just detects whether the the boundary condition is periodic or not. Yeah, in this case, simple. Okay, and in general, um, in general, it's a, uh, the eta invariant is hard to compute, but the general general some theorem states that the eta invariant generates um, the, the many of, not all, but many, many of the, the cobordism invariant. There are more um, precise statements which I don't mention. In, in, in the sufficiently though, Dimensions, as far as we care about, like the dimension eight, like that. Most of the the spin spins here, here I mean spin. Spin ball is an invariant comes from the eta invariant. Okay, so um, yeah, this is I finished the the, the part about the fermion, so. Uh, it's good to stop. Yes. And mm -hmm. invite questions. Okay. Thanks, Kantaro. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. So I have a question about something that you said quite in the beginning. Beginning, yeah. Uh, so th there was this. Uh, so you, you said that, uh, that there could be uh, an anomaly between uh, a global symmetry and spin structure. Yes, yes. yes. Um, what would that mean if we try to uh, if we try to gauge the global symmetry? How does that affect the system? And uh, so I understand that if you try to sum over spin structures, the global symmetry might be lost in the in the resultant theory. Yes. What if we try to gauge the global symmetry? What happens then? Yeah, uh, in that case, well, yeah, I think I think you can. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think you cannot gauge the. You cannot. Well, let, let me be sure. Um, it's it's kind of subtle sometimes. Uh, but yeah, in, in general, I think you, you, what what I would say that you cannot gauge the global part if if. If it's anomalous, I mean, in, in a sense, it's mixed anomaly, but in, in a sense, it's pure anomaly. Just, um, yeah. So I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, I don't know to how to make sense of the gauging of the global symmetry in, in such cases. Okay. I see. Thank you. Okay. 
So if there are no more questions, let's thank Kantaro in any abstract way that we can. So uh, we will meet again in, uh, uh, in half an hour for uh, Irana's talk. And I remind you that uh, in the